it's hard to get up every morning each day. I know that it's hard to speak out when you've nothing to say. And the world seems more unforgiving. It gets harder to just go on living. But listen, listen, I know that it's gonna be okay. And you matter more than you know. You matter through summer and snow. I see in your eyes that you don't quite believe me. Even so, you matter more than you know. I know that it's hard to pretend things are fine when they're not. I know that it's hard when you're constantly saying, so what? As you count off the days in seclusion, you feel loneliness, fear, and confusion. But listen, listen, there's one thing that mustn't be forgotten. You matter to someone, somewhere. You matter and all that you share. I see that the pain that you're holding inside is hard to bear. But you matter to someone, somewhere. That's not the reaction that you should have had. Giving in, giving up would be easy to do. But I need you to hear what I'm saying and know that it's true. Hi, this is Telly Leong, and welcome to the virtual EP release of You Matter, which is also going to be a fundraiser for an organization that is very near and dear to my heart, Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. That first song, You Matter, features J.J. Johnson on the viola and also features my dear friend and musical partner in crime. He is one of the co-creators of Alter Boys, the hit off-Broadway musical. He was also the musical director of Avenue Q on Broadway as well as the Radio City Christmas Spectacular. And he wrote dance arrangements for the Jimmy Buffett musical Margaritaville on Broadway. Please welcome my dear friend, Gary Adler. Hi, Gary. Hi, Telly. Thank you so much for having me in this, although you really didn't have much choice. Nope, not at all. I never do, do I? <laughs> now, Gary and I have collaborated on so many things together. Gosh, we've done two albums, solo albums. Uh, we've 
toured everywhere together. We played everywhere from cruise ships to beach towns to you name it, we've been there. Um, where, where are you spending this quarantine? I am spending it in uh, lovely Green Pond, New Jersey, hmm. which is exit 37 off of Interstate 80, go up about nine miles and you're here. Now, originally this wasn't going to be a, a full EP of songs. It really just started off as that first song, You Matter. To tell me what sort of inspired that, that song. Uh, yeah. It's funny, it was um, in mid-May and um, I was thinking about what is it that everybody sort of is having in common with this lockdown. And um, I thought to myself that no matter what people's financial situations are, no matter what their health situations are, um, everybody is feeling lonesome from time to time and probably depressed. So I was thinking, what would be some advice I could give to somebody who was feeling that low just about life? And um, it was a weird day in May that was kind of snowy, which is what inspired the lyric through summer and snow, which is really just a silly line to help rhyme with more than you know. But, um, but yeah, I was looking outside and I'm like, it should be summer and it's snowing. And uh, there, so there were a lot of little things that I drew from my own personal life to come up with some of that. But I really thought that no matter who we are, we all need to know that we matter and that we are important there's a reason we're all on this earth and even though we can't be together we're all still here and we need to be present what i loved is that uh, the song perfectly captured that feeling of you know where there are some days where you feel completely motivated to write the next you know king lear and like and you know uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna learn all of these new songs and put them in my repertoire and and then there are days where you just feel completely useless <laughs> and, yeah. and completely down. And what I, I felt what you did so beautifully is in a song validate the entirety of that experience that you can feel very motivated and, and, and very um, thankful for this pause and also feel very depressed at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. And I remember you saying something about uh, one time talking about being an artist during this time when um, how can one still call oneself an artist when there's nobody to perform for and no outlet and, and it seems that um, our work isn't as necessary as a lot of other people's work, but it still kind of is. Well, it absolutely is. You know, of course, we have to applaud, applaud the essential workers working in our post offices and grocery stores and, you know, the person delivering your Amazon deliveries and your mail and the essential workers that are at the hospitals. But if, I mean, artists to me are essential, you know, I would love for, I would dare people to try one day of not listening to any music or watching their Netflix or, you know, reading a, a novel to spend this quarantine time, you know, so yeah. it, it, it is, it's, it, you're right, it, it, this period has challenged all of us to redefine ourselves. What does it mean to be a working artist? What does it mean to be an artist when you're not working? When Broadway is shut down, when performing arts venues no longer exist at the moment, um, why is it that we do what we do? You know, you and I, we are very lucky and privileged to, to have a living and a career doing this, that this pays our bills, but do why do we do it when it doesn't pay our bills you know and uh, do are, are we still artists are we are can are we still creating why do we create and um of course i love collaborating with you on anything but i i thought this was um it was wonderful just to get to work on something together something brand new and to and to yeah. breathe life into something you wrote so i thank you for that so since we did that one song together gary and i came up with a crazy idea what if we created a whole EP, an album, completely virtually, not see each other, not go to a recording studio. Gary recorded all of his music from his piano in Jersey, in Green Pond. Um, and, um, and I recorded all of my vocals 
thanks to our dear friends Elliot and Kathy Maisie and their walk-in closet on the 30th floor, which happens to be soundproofed. Um, but um, we decided this, that this would be an artistic experiment and uh, a challenge that we would give ourselves of how to make art during a global pandemic. Take a yeah. look. Hi friends, so I wanted to give you a little behind the scenes look at how You Matter was made. So I am actually house sitting for my dear friend, Elliot Maisie, who is a Broadway producer. Um, and um, he produced shows like The Prom and Kinky Boots and Godspell. And um, he has a wonderful walk-in closet. So this has become my new uh, recording studio. As you can see, I have my microphone and my laptop set up there. And because Elliot was also a producer on Allegiance, I also have Leia Salonga and George Takei back here with me <laughs> as well. Just some leftover life-sized versions of George and Leia. Um, and I sit here um, at my little recording studio with my microphone um, and Leia Salonga judges every note I sing, just like in real life. I love you, Leia. <laughs> I'm 17 and I'm new here today. The village I come from seems so far away. All of the girls know much more what to say, but I know I have a heart like the sea. A million dreams are in me. How do I sound, Leia? How do I? Hi, George. How do I sound, George? <laughs> oh, gosh. Back to work. Well, Gary Adler, I never thought I'd say this, but... Telly Leong is back in the closet <laughs> <laughs> and recording vocals for a new album. <laughs> and now for a complete change of pace, let's do another song. Hit it, Gary. Late night walk, seeing each other in person. 
day soon, I'm going to take you out to the finest restaurant in town. I'm going to hold your hand across the table, even if you haven't washed that hand since you got off the subway. Your hand's got COVID. But till then, allow me to set the mood with my custom background. It's the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> oh gosh, that is so silly. That was Zoom With You with music by Gary Adler and lyrics by our next guest. She is a singer-songwriter. She's based in New York City. She's released five independent albums as an anti-folk joke folk artist and has performed live with Urban Barnyard and the Phyllis Newman's Health Initiative Dancers. Her songs have been featured on the Disney Channel show Johnny and the Sprites, with our dear friend John Tartaglia and an Alex Timbers musical, Dance Dance Revolution. I got to see an evening of her songs, also written with Gary Adler, called Awesomer and Awesomer, which was at the Triad Theater, directed by our dear friend, Alan Maroka from Sesame Street. Please welcome Phoebe Kreutz. Hi. 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 Oh, how are you, Phoebe? I'm good. Hi, Tally. Hi, Gary. Now, Phoebe, where are you right now? I am in Wellsburg, West Virginia, um, at the uh, at my ancestral home. This is where my mom grew up on a dairy farm. There's my my lovely grandmother, uh, who I used to visit here when I was a kid, and uh, we always used to joke that it'd be a great place to hide out if the world ended. And uh, here we are. We've been here since March. <gasps> now, you and Gary have been writing partners for a while and on several projects, but how did the two of you meet? We met on a little show called Avenue Q, where uh, Gary was the music director. And this is way back at the, at the Vineyard. And, uh, and I got a call from Rick Lyon asking if I would be available to puppet wrangle. Because that, uh, that was my gig back then. I worked on Sesame Street and I, you know, I brushed the fur, I polished the eyeballs. And uh, so it was a, a life-changing experience. And, uh, and that's where I met Gary, which was also a life-changing experience. What inspired this crazy song that you and Gary wrote together? It's always exciting for a lyric writer when a bunch of new vocabulary enters the lexicon because all of a sudden you get a lot of new things to rhyme with and a lot of new things to think about. And all of a sudden everybody is on these Zoom meetings. And I learned from, a, you know, one of those silly Our Times articles in the New York Times about how all these people were going on first dates on Zoom and just thinking how awkward that would be. So you're there, you picked out your date on Tinder and now it's time to sit down in front of a ill-lit monitor and try and seduce somebody. To what end, I don't know. You just, you, everybody's hungry for connection. So uh, that's, uh, that's sort of where it came from. And, um, and then I knew there was only one man who could, who could lay down those beats and that was Gary Adler. Um, uh, and, and what Bobby Brown spa song was the inspiration? Um, rock with you. I want to rock with you all night. Yes. So that's that's the direct inspiration. But we were talking earlier about all the, you know, Janet Jackson and Ella DeBarge, all the, uh, all the greats, all the reason that they're babies 20 years after the fact. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Telly. I'm excited for the song. Bye, Gary. Bye. See you later. See ya. Oh, my gosh. Well, what R&B slow jam would be complete without an awesome 90s R&B slow jam track that has been produced 
in a studio, and I want to introduce a very young, talented man here. He has engineered not just that track, but our entire EP project. Please welcome Eli Engelbart. Hello, everybody. It's an honor to be here today. And you're in Michigan, right? I'm in Michigan, yeah, Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor, got it. Now, you are only 19 years old, and by one of the most talented, but also the youngest engineer I've probably ever worked with on an album project. Now, I want to I wanna hear a little bit about your history on, on the television show that you worked on with your sisters, Ariel and Zoe, called Ariel and Zoe and Eli 2. Tell me about that a little bit. Yeah, so Ariel Zoe Eli too. So I, that started off, I was eight years old. It's a musical variety show where we'd have like these like fun little musical segments. We'd have celebrity guests. We'd interview them, maybe sing a song with them. It was pretty fun growing up with that. And if you ever want to watch it, it is on On Demand now. But I got to say, there are, you know, on Facebook, you have a fan base of almost 3 million people. The videos that are available that you guys have online of that show, I mean, over 100 million views on those videos. It's really incredible. And it's so fun to see you working with your siblings um, and acting, you know, because I only know you as a music engineer and I know you were introduced into the showbiz world as a young actor at eight years old, but you are such a skilled engineer. How did you get interested in music production and, and engineering music and all of that? Well, in 2014, I had this phase where I'd like only listen to artists like Skrillex and Dead Mouse. Like I was really into like electronic music. And I was like, I have to make stuff like that. Because before that, I only played guitar. I'm like, I got to expand my horizons and make something crazy. So I bought Ableton. I started learning how to program music. And uh, six years later, here we are. You know, on this project, Gary and I really put you through your paces musically because we've, we've given you every style from 90s R&B slow jam to like musical, pure musical theater to cabaret to pop to rock. Um, so it's, it's really cool to know that you love EDM and maybe that'll be our next project together. We'll do an EDM okay. track together. The other amazing thing about him as an engineer is that I, I will put money on the line stating that Eli probably has the best engine, uh, uh, best hair of any audio engineer out there. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it, it, it works like that. You just don't wash it for a couple days and it's, it's incredible. That's the secret, isn't it? Of course. You just rub it on the pillow a bit, and you know you're good. Um, I would also like everybody out there to know that Eli is nocturnal because you will because you will get mixes and from Eli at, you know, four in the morning. Has, has that, have you always been sort of nocturnal and only worked at night? I mean, I feel like this thing that's happened over the past couple of years because of just my horrible sleep schedule. And honestly, it's kind of a bad thing. I'm trying to fix it, but you know, it works good for everyone else. Cause you know, you just work at night. It's like a, it's like a full cycle, you know, people work during the day. I fix the stuff at night and it's, it's a wonderful collaboration. Well, listen, what the, the result, not only, not only on Zoom with you, but on this next song that we're going to show, uh, which is going to feature your little sister, Jojo on this, um, uh, which is not an easy arrangement by Gary Adler, uh, one of our favorite musical theater tunes from West Side Story. Uh, it is, uh, you, you did a really wonderful job with her on, on, on that. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah. And, and thank you for, for this wonderful collaboration. Um, it, I've, I've loved getting to meet you virtually like this and making music with you. And, um, and I hope we get to do it more in the future. Definitely, we gotta make more projects. You know, my, my schedule's wide open. <laughs> so is mine. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Take Good care, Eli. You. Bye. Open air, wait for 
Hi, Jojo. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, my gosh. You sounded so wonderful on that duet. Thank you so much for singing with me. Now, tell me, where did you shoot that video? Um, so we shoot, like, we shot it in a, like, this park with, like, a ton of, like, trees and stuff and there was like a ton of mosquitoes also so while i was lip singing there was like a ton of mosquitoes going in my mouth which was lovely well i couldn't tell you're an absolute pro and and you're coming you're you're, you're coming to us from michigan am i right yeah where in michigan ann arbor ann arbor and i shot my section of the video on the beach uh on fire island I, we really wanted to shoot these videos sort of in in peaceful places and places where we can find um, some calm during this pandemic, right? So what, what has been very calming for you? Or what, what, what is your go-to place when you need just a little alone time and peace and quiet for you, Jojo? I don't know, I don't really, I mean, I guess my room. Are you, are you, are you in your room right now? Oh uh, yeah, I'm in my room. And I hear that this is a brand new bedroom, is that right? How, how did you get a brand new bedroom? My sister's moved out. So. Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. Now, you're, you're only 13 years old, and you are probably our youngest collaborator on the You Matter project, but you are not new to performing at all. Now, is it true that you started performing at age three? Yes, I was on my sibling's TV show, Aaron, Zoe, and Eli, too, but I don't remember much, but I know I was like younger Zoe. But what I do remember is that they would perform and then they would sign autographs. And I was like, Dad, I want to sign autographs. But he said, oh, you have to perform if you want to sign them. <laughs> so that day I learned a song with Zoe. And then that day after I performed it. And then I went behind the autograph signing table and no one wanted my autograph. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm sure that after people watch that video, they're going to want your autograph for sure, Jojo. Now tell me, you recorded this at home, right? With your brother? What was it like working with your brother in the studio? Have you guys worked together before like this? Yeah, so like on my um, Instagram, I would like perf like sing songs and stuff. So he would like record that. And it's super easy to record with him because he's my brother, so. <laughs> yeah. And he's very good at engineering. He's also very good at what he does. We, we have some very talented youngsters. So I, I know that Gary Adler and I, you know, are so inspired by you and all of your siblings. We know that the next generation of artists is going to be just fine if, if they're all like the Engelberts, for sure. <laughs> now, most recently, you got to do a wonder, one of my favorite roles in the musical theater canon. You got to play Small Allison in Fun Home at the Encore Musical Theater in Michigan. Now tell me about that. What was it like to play Small Allison? I love that show. It was, oh my gosh, it was such a great role. I think anyone my age to get that role would be such a great role because you learn so much from her. I also had a great um, director, Vince Cardinal. Any girl that gets to play Small Allison is very lucky and you learn so much. That music isn't exactly the most straightforward. It's a little bit tricky. Well, um, but I love the score. Was that uh, difficult to learn at all for you or did you pick it up right away? It was something that was just super easy for me. <laughs> I like just listened to the music and then I heard the harmonies and I was like, oh, it's easy. I can just learn that. Well, Jojo, thank you. Thank you so much for singing on this project with us. Thank you. It was such a dream come true to like, perform with you guys. Uh, well, well it's, it's wonderful to sing with you and I hope we get to do it more. Bye. Bye. <laughs> now, certainly, this project would not have been possible without the incredible support and talent from the Engelbert family. But it also would not be possible without the support from the Bernard L. Moss Foundation. The Bernard L. Moss Foundation has established many unique partnerships over the past several years that involve musical theater. Whether it be at the University of Michigan, Broadway Inspirational Voices, the Ronald McDonald House of New York, the foundation works to bring joy and impact lives in a positive way through music. BCEFA is such an important organization, and with its indistinguishable connection to the world of musical theater, it is a perfect fit with the Bernard L. Moss Foundation's mission. And Tonight, the Bernard L. Moss Foundation has agreed to match every single donation raised from the You Matter EP release up to 15 grand. So if you donate 
a dollar, that means your donation is really $2. If you donate $100, that means your donation is actually $200. So please, I encourage you to donate what you can and visit broadwaycares.org slash youmatter2020. Every donation counts. No donation is too big or too small. And everything is being matched up to 15 grand by the amazing Bernard L. Moss Foundation. You know, collaborating with a family of artists like the Engelberts in Ann Arbor made me actually think about my own family. I grew up in New York City, and my parents live in Brooklyn. Now, that's only about, you know, 40 or 45 minutes away from me in Hell's Kitchen in New York City. But because of this pandemic and because of the nature of COVID, I have been too scared to actually go to Brooklyn and see them or hug them or have dinner with them, which is something that I would normally do on a regular basis. Um, I'm sure that there are many people out there who feel the same way about their family members who might be immunocompromised or maybe their family members who are of a certain age where you don't wanna risk infecting them and getting them sick if you're a younger person. Uh, Certainly, I've missed seeing my parents very much during this time. Thank goodness for things like FaceTime and Zoom, but it is still difficult to not be able to physically be with them. Um, there is a song that I sang eight times a week in Aladdin called Proud of Your Boy, and it's a song that Aladdin sings to his dear, dearly departed mother in the show. and. Um, Every night when I sang that song on Broadway at the New Amsterdam Theater, I thought about my mom. I thought about singing that song to my mother. And um, I hear that song now and I think of it differently. And I think of my parents differently during this time. Um, this is Proud of Your Boy and it's dedicated to my parents who I miss a lot. your boy I'll make you proud of your boy believe me bad as I've been ma you're in for a pleasant surprise I've wasted time I've wasted me so say I'm slow for my age a late bloomer okay I agree that I've been one rotten kid some sun some pride and some joy but I'll get over these lousing up messing up screwing up times you'll see ma now comes the better part someone's gonna make good cross his stupid heart make good and finally make you proud of your boy Wouldn't be all that I am. Water flows under the bridge. Let it pass, let it go. There's no good reason that you should believe me, not yet. I know, but someday and soon, I'll make you proud of your boy. Though I can't make myself taller or smarter or handsome or I wasn't born perfect like dad or you. Mom, I will try to, try hard to make you proud of your boy. This pandemic-inspired project is called You Matter, and I don't know about you guys, but I have found that my priorities and what's important to me has shifted a lot 
during this pandemic experience, and I've learned a lot about myself. And so I wanted to ask all of our special guests one question. If I were to ask you what matters to you, what is the first thing you think of? I know everybody says this, but uh, family, my immediate family who is here with me. And family can be defined in many ways. Uh, the two beings that I live with are very much my family. One being my partner, JJ Johnson. Come here, hello, hi. JJ, our one man string section, I love him. Hi, JJ. And uh, the other member of our family, Maxter. Maxter. Oh. Maxter. There's the ball, oh my goodness. Acceptance and kindness, which I think is why I love the musical theater community so much is because they're all about that. Well, I mean, I guess, right, you have to say your family because that's definitely true. Um, and when you asked me that, I, like, that's what flashed into my mind. So, but that's sort of a boring answer. Like, I'm sure that everybody's family matters to them. My family happens to be the best family. I want everyone staying safe, you know? I want everyone to stay productive, so just making lots of music with my siblings. Just gotta keep everyone sane, keep everyone productive, healthy, you know? I think what I've found during this is what I, I think, I can't define it better than just fun. I just need fun and uh, hijinks whenever possible. And Telly, what matters to you? What does matter to me? I think, to me, storytelling matters to me because storytelling allows all of us to connect to one another on a human level and um, have empathy for one another. And so much of that is why I do theater and why I consider myself an artist and at the end of the day, a storyteller, because I really do feel like it is, it is, it is the way that we don't feel so alone on mm -hmm. this planet. So, um, so I thank you for allowing me to tell your stories uh, during, this, during this fun project. And you are an expert storyteller. Oh, thank you. Hi, my name is Michael McElroy. Hello, this is Renee Lee Goldsberry. This is Anne Harada. Hey there, this is B.D. Wong. Hi, this is George Takei. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for donating to Broadway Cares Equity Fight Aid. Be well. Stay healthy. Stay strong. Be good to one another. Let's be good to one another. And remember, you matter. You matter. You matter. You matter. You matter. Ah, thank you, friends. Now, we have one more song to share with you tonight. Now, if you enjoyed what you heard, please consider making a donation to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS at broadwaycares.org slash youmatter2020. And if you like the music that you heard tonight, you can download and stream the songs on iTunes, on Spotify, on Amazon, wherever you get music, and know that the revenue from these downloads and streams will continue to support Broadway Cares and the incredible work that they are doing. Now, since the beginning of the pandemic, BCEFA has given over $5 million to the Actors Fund for COVID-19 relief. They've also given $1 million to launch the Every Artist Insured program. This program is near and dear to my heart because I know that the Actors Fund and the Friedman Health Center is there for me when I don't have enough weeks to make health insurance. And as an actor, that is something I'm thinking about all the time. And it, it comforts me at night to know that they have my back. Um, just so you know how far your donations can go, a, a $25 donation helps cover a, a doctor's visit copay for someone who's dealing with COVID-19. $50 helps fill 10 bags of groceries for a family that is struggling during the pandemic. $500 covers temporary housing for someone who's recovering from coronavirus. And remember, every donation that you make tonight to broadwaycares.org slash youmatter2020 is being matched by the Bernard L. Moss Foundation, up to $15,000. So every little bit counts, and BCEFA cannot do this incredible work without you. So this last song is dedicated to all of you out there. Your donations are making a difference, and you, you are the heroes that we need right now. This one's for you. Oh 
often dreamed of a far off place where a hero's welcome would be waiting for me, where the crowds would cheer when they see my face, and a voice keeps saying, This is where I'm meant to be. I'll be there someday. I can go the distance. I will find my way. If I can be strong, I know every mile would be worth my while. When I go the distance, I'll be right where I belong. Down an unknown road to embrace my fate. Though the road may wander, it will lead me to you. And a thousand years would be worth the wait. It might take a lifetime, but somehow I'll see it through. And I won't look back. I can go the distance. I will stay on track. No, I won't accept defeat. It's an uphill slope, but I won't lose hope. Till I go the distance and my journey is complete But to look beyond the glory is the hardest part For a hero's strength is measured by his heart hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on you cast your fears aside And you know you can survive So when you feel like hope is gone Look inside you and be strong And you'll finally see the truth Know that a hero lies in you.